After a long wait, the geometric internals update is here. Sort of. A closed beta test of the update has recently began and I was one of the lucky few given access to try it out and help look for bugs. Today, I will be going over the coming geometric internals update, showcasing some of its biggest features and building a tank using the new tools. Let's get started. And here we have the in-development version of Sprocket version 0.2. As you can see here, we only have the flat sandbox and the showroom to work with. So no combat or epic battle scenes just yet. Let's open up the flat sandbox and take a look inside. So while it appears that our tank is very far away from us, and making a new design will probably not help. It does serve a good opportunity to check out the new user interface. There's been a general recategorization of pretty much everything. And then, oh, here's our tank now. Still the basic hole like before, although it does appear that some of the default settings have changed a tiny bit. So we're going to want to start by just getting the intended shape of the vehicle taken care of first. Probably want to raise this up a little bit. Bring the sides in more. I think that looks good. Now let's take a look at the suspension, which now you right click to be able to edit. And let's just drag all these wheels into place. And there we have it. This should look a little bit better. Next up, let's take a turret and place it on top. Since we only have a generated one. Hey, look at that. There is a basket underneath it now. This should show up later when we go to edit the inside of the vehicle. There we go. Slightly basic, but for this it will work just fine. Now let's put a cannon on it. The setup process for adding a cannon to a vehicle is much different now. Right now you have a mantlet that you just place on the front. As you can see, there is no gun on it add one, you now have to go to the cannons tab and directly place it onto the mantlet. As you can see here, we are starting with a 105mm cannon with 75mm of propellant flame with 37mm of penetration. So let's start by trying to edit it. Okay, these stats are acting a little bit weird here. The bore length is 48.84 meters. 
this is obviously a bug that still needs to be fixed. Okay, that's a bit interesting. So what it's apparently doing is taking the length of this segment, instead of using millimeters, it's using meters, and it rolls over every time we hit 64 or something close to that. Okay, I think 66 is where it rolls over. So obviously this cannon will be just for show right now and not really for actually using. But nonetheless, there we go. Now let's take a Commander Coppola and add it in. Let's take a Bruce site and put it up on the front. And add a extra viewport just to be on the safe side. Add a gunner site so that our gunner can see what he's doing. And give this vehicle a nice paint job. Okay, this is starting to look a little nice so far. Our next step will be to take a look on the inside. So as you can see here, there is a lot more new parts compared to before. You now have a steering wheel, which you can adjust to get appropriately positioned. Up here we have our torsion bars for the suspension. These guys look a little thin, but will work just fine for a lightweight vehicle that we're building. Back here we have our engine, which is a 8 cylinder, 2 liter per cylinder engine. It now is a physical block, which you can take and put. Apparently it also works in the turret basket, which is definitely not good. You can put it up above, you can rotate it. And pretty much put it wherever you'd like to. For our purposes, we will put it here in the back and give it a few more cylinders. You can edit these little cylinders, which are meant to represent your powertrain, and split them. So now you can form your own drive shaft that goes pretty much wherever you want it to go. And when you go to increase the engine size a little bit more, it will consequently make the box bigger. Sometimes maybe a little too big. Let's see if we can get a 2.5 liter per cylinder engine to fit in here somehow. Flips on that side a bit. Okay, so that means there is a... Okay, there we go. There is a minimum angle before it starts to have issues. Perfect, that is our engine and powertrain. Now let's give it a fuel tank so it can go places. You can now place fuel tanks internally as blocks and then just scale them to fit your needs. 
For our case, we will put a 677 liter fuel tank in there. More than enough for what this will need. Next up, let's take a look at putting in a driver. So here you get these little posable figures which represent your crew and you can place them pretty much wherever you want as long as they can still fit reasonably well within the vehicle. You can change their sit height or the angle at which they lean forward or back and how their feet are aligned. And now we will want to take two crew members symmetry enabled and put them in the turret. Let's bring them down just a bit. And this posture can change just a little bit more. A higher sit height and lay back a little more. I think we're good there. Bring him up as well, angle him back, and perfect. Two very happy crew members. Now let's take a look at our gun breach. Right now it is currently inside the mantlet, so obviously it is not going to work very well. But now we can bring it back a little more. Perfect. And here we have our gun traverse, what would you call this? Okay, gun mount. Here we can set the torque and the ratio for how quickly it moves and set the constraints which will affect the hitbox of the gun breach. You pretty much now can set it to whatever you want so long as the gun breach can actually move within those limitations. And next up, let's... Oh. Looks like something broke back here a little bit. Interesting. How do you fix this? Okay, there we go. Anyways, now let's throw some ammo in here. Go to firepower and wax. And... Nope, put two. Need just one. You will angle it sideways a bit. Where's where? Oh, it's clicking outside, that's why. Perfect. And now it's clicking with something else. There we go. And that means we now have. Two boxes of 20, so 40 rounds of ammo. That'll work just fine. Down over here, we have a little traverse motor for the turret. We can make it hand cranked if we want, but I think here we'll just make it a standard motor. We'll set the torque all the way up and change the ratio Move it down and in just a bit. And now let's assign our crew to operate the traverse motor and lane drive and make him our gunner. We will make this person our loader and this person our driver. Let's see how it goes.
And look at that, it is working. It appears we cannot actually look through the site just yet. Obviously, our transmission needs to be looked at a bit. Before that, let's see how well it can handle a jump. That went pretty well. I am going to use this tool I have been working on for the past few weeks. The link to the website is in the description below. Let's see how well it will work here. Our vehicle era is late war and our sprocket diameter is 0.6. Our engine's RPM limit is 2444, so I will change it here. And the horsepower at our upshift RPM is 676. The vehicle weight is 12.41, so I'll enter that here. And for the climbing angle, which is how steep you want to be able to climb, I'll just leave it at 40, which should be a little overkill here. Our, tr our transmission is 12 gears, so I will set it here and check prioritize acceleration so it goes a little bit quicker out of the gate. Our top speed is a pretty impressive 90.6 kilometers an hour and these are the gears we need to input to get that result. And with that done, let's see how it performs. Looks like it's accelerating pretty well. And now it is decelerating. Interesting. So I guess we're capped at around 40 kilometers an hour. Interestingly enough, that is also the same statistics, well, almost identical, that we are given for the interwar era. We could probably make this vehicle a little bit smaller. Let's see if we can actually pull that off. We'll start with the hole and using the generated settings, we can grab the back and bring it in. And then take a look at our tracks and let's adjust the spacing a bit. There we go, that looks nice. I also want to take these and extend them out just a bit so we can put paneling on them later. And then go back to our internal view and it looks like some stuff will need to be moved a bit. We can take our driver, go off to the side just a bit. Take the steering wheel and put it into place. Move the fuel tank back and pretty much grab all of these. Well, uh, that's not going to work good. You will need to enable global space. actually could make this vehicle a bit shorter too. There's so much space still. Take the engine and move it down a bit now that our transmissions are a bit smaller. Take our fuel tank and shrink it down just a bit. You could even take the turret basket 
another segment to it. Oh, looks like we went a little too far. There we go. There is still plenty of room left. Even take the... Oh, looks like the engine broke again. Perfect. Now it's even smaller than before with a three-man crew. And... Nice, now we just made it four. And even we still have more room to throw in more ammo racks in the hole if we want. Yeah, there is still a ton of space left over to shove stuff in here, but not really sure what else to throw in. So I guess what we can do at this point is start decorating. Okay, this tank is starting to come along very nicely now. We have a pretty good amount of decorations on it. The only thing that could use some work is here. Fortunately for us, there has been a pretty nice new addition. We can now place parts directly onto the mantlet. So in this case, we can now add a custom mantlet very easily. Just got to place these guys down, rotate them into place. And now very obviously scale them down a bit. And now we have a custom mantlet. You can even do this with compartments if you want. You can just place it on and then manipulate it as you want. But 
In this case, we're just going to make it easy and stick to some stock parts for here. And even more, you can take regular parts or compartments and stick them on the gun barrel. With that, let's just make a couple more refinements to the paint job, and there we have it. We have a tank fully detailed and built out in 0.2. I think our engine vent could use some coloring though, in which case let's grab a black decal and scale it up just a bit. Now we just have to find it and we can now control the depth. If we want to make the whole thing black, we can. If we want to just make a small section black, we can. In this case, we only need part of the engine black. For the section that's meant to represent a void. In this case, we only need the bottom section black, which is meant to represent the void in which the air gets sucked into. And with that said and done, let's see how it does. And it appears that there is still a bug with the ammo. There is a bug that has appeared to where you have ammo in the hole, your gun will not work, and the game will simply be unable to do anything. So, I have removed the ammo from the hole, and now let's see how it does. There is no problem here whatsoever. Yeah, there's still a few things that are going to need to be worked out. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. We've managed to successfully build a tank using the 0.2 closed beta and tested it out with a couple small issues spotted, but otherwise it seemed to work pretty well. I plan to make another video releasing within a couple weeks, depending on how quickly updates and bug fixes roll out. Hopefully by then we will be able to actually use a vehicle in combat and see how it performs there as well. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time!